This video is called Putting It All Together, and it's for Chapter 5 of Google SketchUp for Dummies. This is a little house that I modeled. It happens to be the house that uh, I live in. Um, and it's a pretty complicated little model. Um, it's made up of a roof and exterior walls. There's inside walls as well. If you look inside here, there's even stuff here in the kitchen. There's a stove and a fridge. There's all kinds of stuff. What I even modeled was a staircase, if we sort of orbit around here and zoom, you'll see that there's a stair, and if I actually go all the way up to the second floor, you'll see the stair kinda comes up like this. This is kind of the stairwell in the house. And if we back up, you'll see there's stuff over here too. We've got bedrooms and a bathroom, all that stuff. Anyway, the idea is that this is a pretty complex... You know what? I'm kind of stuck right now, so I'm gonna go up here and take this Zoom Extents tool. And I click on that once, it's gonna zoom the whole model so that it's filling my screen. Whenever I'm kind of uh, zooming and panning and orbiting around and I can't see anything anymore, I just hit that zoom extents and it automatically fills my screen with the whole model. Okay, so I've got this complex model. What's more, I actually have um, other stuff in it too. So if I open layers and turn on furniture, I've actually modeled, this is the kind of dork I am, I've modeled all my furniture and my furniture is here in the house as well. So what I've got is a complete model, but the, the purpose of this video is to try and explain a little bit about how I use groups and components and layers to organize a model like this so that I can very easily take it apart and work on it and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is open the outliner. Let's go to Window and Outliner. And here's the outliner right now. And it's a dialog box that shows me basically a map of the things that I have in my model. So the model's called House Model. And I've got a group called First Floor and a group called Second Floor and a group called Shell. And if I explode each of these, not explode, but let's say expand each of these, you'll see that I've got a number of components inside each one of these things. So bathroom sink, bookshelves, DVD shelves, shallow shelves, all that stuff. So a bunch of components inside first floor. Inside second floor, it's more of the same. I've got a bunch of components, bathtub, sink, toilet, uh, and a, a group called first floor ceiling, which is the ceiling of the first floor. I happen to put that on the second floor because you'll see in a bit when I turn off or hide the second floor I want to be able to see the first floor without the ceiling. Last of all I've got a group called shell and shell includes the exterior walls and it exclude, includes the roofs and then I've got a group called roofs inside the group called shell and roofs includes obviously the roofs but also a group called chimney which is this thing and a group called second floor ceiling, which is the ceiling of the second floor here in my model, right there. Okay, so let's start turning stuff off and you'll see how this kind of works. All right, so the first thing I'm going to turn off is I'm going to turn off roofs. Let's do that. So by doing this, I'm just going to, uh, or to do this, I should say, I'm just going to right click on roofs and say hide. And when I do that, everything inside this group gets hidden. So the, the roof and the chimney and the second floor ceiling all are hidden right now. But this part, the gable part right there of, um, of the roof is actually part of the exterior wall. So that's still there right now. But you'll see now that with the roofs hidden, they're not erased, they're just hidden. I can see down into the first floor of the house, just like that. Okay, next step, let's turn off or hide exterior walls. So I'm gonna right click on that and say hide. And when I do that, I'm just left with this stuff, which is, uh, as it turns out, it's two groups, right? So let's just hide shell while we're at it. Now, nothing more is going to disappear because I'd already hidden both the groups inside shell. But here I'm left with just the uh, top floor and the bottom floor of the house. And a couple things I wanted to point out here. If you look at the inside walls, you'll notice that the walls are modeled without having end caps there. And that's so that I don't end up with double faces for the outside walls and the inside faces. I don't end up with Z fighting or that kind of flashing face behavior that you see when you have two faces in the same spot. Basically, I've modeled this with as little uh, geometry, that is to say edges and faces, as I possibly can. So there's um, everything is kind of just one surface thick when it needs to be one surface. You'll see this. Uh, downstairs ceiling actually comes here and wraps up like that and then it kind of wraps up and then the exterior wall takes over from there. It's all pretty complex. I have to admit this model took me quite a few hours to make so um, if you're ambitious enough to make an inside-outside model of the place where you live or work or something like that know that you 
you're going to be committing to a lot of time to do that. And it's probably time well spent because you end up with a nice model, but it's certainly not a half an hour's work. Okay, let's turn off the group called second floor. I'm going to hide that. Okay, and now I just have first floor here. And you'll notice what's a part of first floor. I actually modeled, in this case, the whole stair. See this staircase that's coming up here? I modeled all of that as part of the first floor group right there. And that's just because it happened to be easier to do that in this particular model. Sometimes it's going to be easier to include your stair in your second floor, and sometimes you're going to want to create a group all just for your stair. But in this case, it was easiest just to, to kind of include it in that first floor group. Uh, now I'm going to turn off first floor, and you'll see that everything's going to disappear. Everything's gone, just like that. Let's go back and unhide first floor right there. And um, what I'm going to do now is just collapse my outline a little bit, and let's look at layers. And I'm going to turn on my furniture layer here. And when I do that, all my furniture pops in. So I've got a dining room table, and this is actually where I'm sitting right now. I'm sitting at this chair, working at this desk on my computer, recording this video as we speak. This is the couch uh, we got, and it's a really comfortable couch. Anyway, so the idea is each of these things is a component, and they all live on the furniture layer. And the reason for that is I either want to be able to look at my model with furniture or without furniture. So I don't end up creating a group or a component just for furniture. I actually put all that furniture on its own layer so that I could very easily just turn that on and off. And that way, if I add more furniture, I can very easily just add those components when, when I add that uh, furniture to this furniture layer and um, keep my model really nice and organized. Okay, what else can I show you? Actually, you know what? I think that's about it. Um, so let's go back and just turn all that stuff back on again. You'll see that it was really easy to go back and unhide. So let's unhide this, and then I'm going to unhide the shell. Let's unhide the exterior walls and unhide the roofs. And over here in layers, I'm going to... Actually, I've got my furniture layer showing right now, so I don't need to unhide that. But basically, that's the entire building. Okay, that's the end of the video called Putting It All Together for Google SketchUp for Dummies.